icebergs. We all love them, and I love SpongeBob. And I got an iceberg chart right here. What a trending YouTube topic. Oh. Bikini Atoll. Bikini Atoll is the surface of the SpongeBob world. Bikini Bottom is believed to have taken the name of Bikini Atoll, a location in the Marshall Islands. Seven Deadly Sins. Hey, I did this one. I covered it in a video. Basically, just a theory that the main characters represent the seven deadly sins. SpongeBob is lust, Patrick is sloth, Mr. Krabs is greed, Plankton is envy, Squidward is wrath, Sandy is pride, and <sighs> Gary is gluttony. Ooh, Pat and Gary are related. According to the episode Rule of Dumb, Patrick and Gary are first cousins. Isn't that nice? Bikini Bottom Mysteries. This is a video series put out by Nickelodeon focusing on more minor aspects of the show, such as how Goo Lagoon can exist or the seemingly unending torment that is Old Man Jenkins' life. Lego Stop Motion Videos If you have ever searched up anything Spongebob on YouTube, chances are you've seen videos recreating Spongebob episodes purely in Lego. There are a ton of these. Like, I, I mean a ton. Sponge Boy. Sponge Boy is the prototype name for Spongebob. Mr. Krabs references it in Season 1's Squeaky Boots, widely believed to have been changed due to a copyrighted mop named Sponge Boy, but as a YouTuber named Kid Loves Stew found in an excellent video I cannot recommend enough, he disproves this theory. King Neptune's Design Change Over the course of the show and movies, King Neptune has had his design changed around quite a bit. Not much is known exactly why. Some theories claim one is Neptune and the other is Poseidon, but again, no one really knows. Background characters. You know them. The background fish. The incidentals. Tons of differently designed characters just really meant to be in the background or of minor roles. Such as Harold, Fred, Frank, you know the rest. Chocolate. Reference to the chocolate guy from Chocolate and Nuts. Yeah! A fish who makes a very odd noise when reacting to Spongebob's horrible ugliness. This was a meme for a while, especially in YouTube poops. Handsome Squidward. Another famous meme. This one of the glorious Squidward after getting his face smashed in by a door. Spongebob's age estimation. There are a ton of different theories on the titular Sponge's age. Most use the reference of his license in Season 1's Sleepy Time, which features a date of birth, July 14th, 1986. Doing a quick search of this provides nothing special. Was this just a random date chosen, or is it an inside joke or reference? I don't know, but I've got a ton more video to do, and I really don't have time for this, guys. The Splinter. An infamous Season 6 episode that features Spongebob getting a splinter and has a ton of gross-out humor. One Course Meal Controversy. Another infamous episode, this one from Season 7, primarily noted for its unalive joke about Plankton getting run over. A Day with Spongebob. Ooh, got an interesting one. So this was a DVD that featured a mockumentary-styled show about exploring Spongebob's world. It was a really interesting premise, and there's a really great video about it by Blame It On George? I'm hoping I'm saying that right. About it. Only one problem about this DVD. It doesn't exist. My Leg. A reoccurring phrase from a background fish, eventually named Fred. Got his own episode later in the show, and for some people ruined the joke. I still like it, though. Squidward's, uh, unalive. A classic creepypasta that details Squidward suffering from some red mist, embarrasses himself at a symphony, and uses a shotgun with no regard for gun safety standards. Great job, Squidward. Also, this got referenced in a later episode, Spongebob and Random Land. Eventually got censored and replaced with Baby Squidward. Krabby Patty's Secret Formula. Uh, probably the biggest mystery in the show. There are tons of different approaches here. Some believe secret ingredients include crab meat, King Poseidon's powder, four heaping tablespoons of freshly ground plankton, and plenty more. It's never been revealed, and hopefully never will be. Cheap Walk Cycles For the Season 3 episode, The Sponge Who Could Fly, we followed Patchy the Pirate as he waits for the missing Spongebob episode to premiere. When it finally does, it's a sequence of the sponge walking down an endless street, making some uncanny walk cycles. Patchy is rightfully angry and misses the actual episode. These walk cycles creep me out a ton when I was younger, not gonna lie. House Fancy Toenail Scene As with the Splinter entry, this is a Season 6 episode, House Fancy, that features Squidward's toenail getting ripped off by a couch. It's nasty, but nothing terrible. 
People go crazy for this scene though, and it's used as a prime example of the Spongebob Dark Ages. That was the surface, nothing too bad or mysterious. Now we move on to... Bob the Sponge. Bob the Sponge was a character created in Steven Hillenburg's comic The Inner Tidal Zone, and would serve as a partial inspiration for the bunch Bob we know today. Plankton Swearing. As far as I can tell, this is in reference to a video of Mr. Lawrence, the voice actor for Plankton, in a video that features him swearing in the single cell organism's voice. I'm not going to show it here because I don't want to have my video struck down by the YouTube gods, but you can find it pretty easy. Spongeboy Ahoy. Similar to the name of Spongeboy, this was the prototype name for the show today. For the same reasons as last time, it was changed. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, best known for his roles such as The Lizard and Rango or Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill where he plays Johnny Depp uncredited, featured in the episode Spongebob vs. The Big One. He played Jack Kahuna Laguna, the sexiest creature ever shown in the cartoon. He saves the crew by teaching Bunchbob how to surf. He also got referenced in Truth or Square where this forgettable dog claims our boy Patchy is Johnny Depp in disguise. Okay, I also went down a wormhole researching this stupid character, and it turns out some of the staff that play and write for this dumb dog got arrested for the January 6th riots. Didn't think I'd reference that here in an iceberg video, but whatever, you know. Glad I don't have to reference politics all that much. Spongebob homosexuality controversy. Oh, come on. So this incredibly stupid point can be a multitude of ideas. For one, it could be referencing season 2's Rockabye Bivalve, which features Sponge and Pat as parents. This could also just be a general reference to how Spongebob acts, such as with his seemingly non-stop obsession with Squidward. If my tone and wordage haven't made it obvious, this is a really dumb point. Don't harass people based on gender or sexuality, it's 2023, why are people still homophobic, man? Come on! Pick a more difficult target, like the asthmatics or something. The perception of season 4 becoming appealing. I guess people are starting to come around to season 4 some more? Not too sure on this one. Season 4 has some bangers, such as Krusty Towers, but a good chunk of these are also scrapped ideas from Season 3, so... Barack Obama's favorite character. Okay, so apparently the former president was interviewed with a variety of questions, and eventually the topic got to Spongebob. He said, and I quote, Some of you were, let's admit it, while I was out there campaigning, you were watching the Disney Channel. End quote. Later in the interview, he said he gave these parents a pass, because he would do the same with his daughters. Then he said, I quote, I loved iCarly. I got you. I know because I was sitting there. I had a soft spot for Spongebob. Spongebob was my favorite." End quote. Also while digging in this, I apparently found like a different recording of The Best Day Ever, the song, not the episode, kinda, that is celebrating November 5th, 2012, which I think was an important day for presidential campaigns. Go look this one up for yourself. I don't have enough time to delve into the political landscape of Bikini Bottom. Respect to Obama for that Spongebob comment though. Astrology with Squidward. There were a few animated segments that featured Squidward as an astrology girl making predictions for certain groups. This was considered lost media for a while, but it was discovered not even all the zodiac types were covered for these videos, only getting six. Those being Sagittarius, Taurus, I think, Cancer, Leo, Gemini, Pisces. Sorry guys, I, I don't I don't know this stuff. I like I don't know. March first, 2018 hoax. There was a large hoax that claimed Spongebob would be ending March 1st, 2018. Judging by Nickelodeon sales records, this would not be a smart move to make. Jimmy Neutron takes over Nick. So apparently there was a Jimmy Neutron bumper program that would mess with the show's airing, and it would change select aspects. I never saw Jimmy Neutron because I have good taste, but someone was able to get a clip of what it looked like. Spongebob Super Bowl Petition. Oh boy. This one's gonna be a mess. So for Super Bowl 53 or 276, I don't really keep up with the Super Bowl, Spongebob was teased to show up. Before this, there was a huge petition to get Spongebob and the crew to show up to reference the most famous episode, Season 2's Band Geeks. You probably know it. This was in part due to Hillenburg's passing, and fans wanted to pay respect. This petition received a massive amount of signings, getting about 1.2 million total. Squidward showed up in a quick animated segment to introduce the real, an actual halftime show performer, Travis Scott and some forgettable band. People were not happy about this. You could check the fan discourse online, but the fallout was immense, man. Palestinian Krusty Krab. There was a replica of the Krusty Krab built in Ramallah, West Bank, Palestine around 2014. Sorry for any mispronunciations, people from Ramatra. I believe it was unofficial and not authorized through Nickelodeon, so this place was quickly closed in 2019. What a shame. I would have loved to be harassed by Squidward for asking for some extra salt. 
Shanghai, different endings. When the season 2 special Shanghai first aired, its entire gimmick was users could call and vote to influence the ending of Who Gets a Wish. Each scene exists online, you can find them, but of course Spongebob won with the majority of the votes. During the original airing, there were a ton of differences. There were more patchy segments that gave instructions on how to vote, and he would actually detail the two endings that lost, but it's not the same as the actual segments you can find online today. He also showed off the phone number to call, and the episode was called You Wish, rather than Shanghai. For being a one-time airing gimmick, there's actually some good info to look into if you want more on this topic. David Bowie's Cameo David Bowie, legendary music creator, had a cameo in the special Truth or Square, a Willy Wonka type episode where each character gets a moment to sing. Everybody does. Except the guy Bowie voices, which is so heartbreaking. He posthumously also allowed the song No Control to be used for the Spongebob musical. What an awesome guy. Rest in peace, man. Yummer. In an online game titled Spongebob Saves the Day, some fans went through the game files. They found two sprites titled Yummer 1 and Yummer 2 and found this lovely image. When emailed, the devs responded that Yum, not Yummer, was a placeholder. He was so creepy looking as a way of attracting attention to what needed editing. His beautiful face slipped through the final pass, somehow, and so he lives on in the game files. Not the first weird unused game asset I'll be covering today. If you know, you know. I was a teenage Gary, deleted scene. So there's a popular fan theory that claims a swipe transition in the season 1 episode I Was a Teenage Gary originally uh, was actually an entire scene of Squidward transforming into a snail. This has been proven and debunked by the original staff. Spongebob in real life, J. Chase Films. Prior to research, I have no clue who this was. So this is a YouTuber that uses actually some pretty decent editing and effects work to bring cartoon characters into real life. Can't say much because I've never really seen them though. Judging by his most recent video, quality is really high. Props to this guy. Robo Squidward. By my best guess, this is in reference to a cut robot Squidward battle from the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. It got kind of a rehash in SpongeBob's Truth or Square game, but it was also brought back for rehydrated. I think for a multiplayer mode, but I don't know. Battle for Bikini Bottom, unused boss phase. Now this is going to be a cardinal sin, and I do apologize guys, but uh, I actually never played the classic Battle for Bikini Bottom, so this is the first time really doing any research on this. Apparently there was going to be another phase for the final fight in the game, where Pat fights an anchor arms wielding Robo Spongebob. Pat has to lob rocks at the inflatable points to deflate the arms. Again, this is just my guess, you guys probably know more than I do, for being honest. Battle for Bikini Bottom, Patrick's Dream, unused. More generic Battle for Bikini Bottom stuff. This one is about an unused level involving Pat and Ice Cream. Battle for Bikini Bottom, Glove World. How many Battle for Bikini Bottom entries are there? As far as I can tell, it was another cut level. I don't want to research any more Battle for Bikini Bottom, guys. Please stop. SpongeBob Pilot Intro. An alternate version of the intro we know today was fully made for the pilot Help Wanted. It was much faster paced, different visuals, and had a different announcer and a vocalless audio track. Give it a listen, it's not terrible. Spongebob reference in Phineas and Ferb. Being a diehard Nick and Cartoon Network kid, I stayed far, far away from Disney, so I don't know much about this show. In an episode called Summer Belongs to You, three characters are on screen. I do not know anything about these people, so I will name them. Love interest in that one tree Pokemon are on the coast when Isosceles Triangle references making something out of a sponge and starfish. Reef Blower. Probably a reference to the season one episode of the same name. My best guess is specifically how there is no dialogue. For a long time, it was believed to have been from faulty audio equipment, and I was actually part of this group. Turns out, this is completely false. It just would have been too costly to pay for what amounted to a filler episode meant to expand Help Wanted to meet guidelines. Thanks to Jay Lender for debunking this theory. If this entry isn't about the episode, then I'm out of ideas. Have a bowl, Mr. Squidward. Have a bowl, Mr. Squidward! Dig a hole, Mr. Squidward! This was a popular video of Squidward and some mac and cheese. Good times, man. Spongebob is asexual. Spongebob is asexual. Sandy was potentially planned as a love interest, but it was dropped since it would be really stupid. There's this one incident where Nickelodeon showed off like LGBTQ plus characters and Spongebob was a part of it and people went crazy. I don't get people, man. There's also this statement from Ice Spice, some person I've never heard of before, and said her first crush ever was Spongebob. Okay. Roger Bumpus, arrested. 
Around January 15, 2016, Roger Bumpus, the voice of Squidward Tentpoles, was arrested on charges of driving under the influence. He said he did it, and that was about it. Sailor Mouth, uncensored. So when the season 2 episode Sailor Mouth was in production, the cast was finding it very difficult to censor and stop themselves from using curse words. After a bit, they decided to actually cuss in character and just have it get censored in post. In an LA Comic Con 2021 panel, Tom Kenny and Roger Bumpus, hey I know that guy, reference how there exists a tape with the original transcript of in-character swears. We only hope some brave explorer can search through the labyrinth that is the Nickelodeon Studios. Spongehenge Scaring Kids Spongehenge was a season 5 episode and is kinda infamous for select groups of fans. The episode features characters going out of character to drive a poor Crunch Bob away since he has a bunch of jellyfish following him. As one video I remember saying, it is really mean-spirited for no real reason. Some speculation is on the intro, where two fish argue about the god of the sea. Check out Karsten Runquist, I think, video on it. The ending involves Spongebob returning to Bikini Bottom only to have it all buried in sand. This appropriately freaked out a ton of younger children out, and I can confirm, I was one of them. There's just something really off-putting and sinister about the episode. Nothing extremely evil occurs or any creepy moment, it's just bitter and acrid towards the Bob for no reason. Squidward's father, Jeff Tentacles. That's who his dad is. Not much is known about this sexy beast besides his amazing fashion sense, seemingly apathetic aptitude and lack of hugs he gave Squidward as a kid. Encino, California. This is in reference to our boy Patchy the Pirate's home. Patchy's home that we see is actually featured in North Hollywood, LA. Disgusting. I would love to go over there and see the home myself, but that means going to California. I really do not want to go to California, guys. The Mystery of Pearl's Mother Pearl's mother has never been revealed. Many different fan speculations and theories have popped up, but none confirmed. I believe it was a rule given by Hillenberg that we should never ever discover the parents, and Vincent Waller, current production member, basically confirmed we'll never know much about her. Have you seen this snail, original plot? Again, thanks to Vincent Waller's stream of Spongebob trivia, we know the original plot of the season 4 episode Have You Seen This Snail, where Gary runs away, actually featured the grandma, the main antagonist, fattening Gary up to eat him. I always thought that's just what the original was going for, but okay. The Inner Tidal Zone. As mentioned before, this was a comic Steven Hillenburg worked on and would eventually lead to the cartoon we all know and love today. Stolen Spongebob Rooftop Balloons. Okay, so this is a really good one. So back when the original Spongebob movie was being promoted, they had a tie-in with the legendary Burger King, known for their overall mediocrity and nothing else. They featured large, inflatable Spongebob balloons to sit atop the throne of the fast food joint. This was really cool, until they were reported missing. People have stolen a ton of these things to the point where police have been getting involved. Apparently these balloons, of which there were hundreds of, mind you, cost nearly 500 bucks each. 2009 Burger King controversy. This actually is not in reference to the stolen inflatable, still want one. This is instead about the now infamous ad for the Spongebob toys at Burger King. Basically it just features the burger feudal lord himself dancing with some ladies while a 1990s Sir Mix-a-Lot song plays. Chances are you've heard this, if not, go check it out. It's definitely one of the marketing campaigns of all time. Morning Glory. You all know Ocean Man, the song that plays as Spongebob finally gets that manager's promotion at the end of the first movie. Turns out there might have been a different song chosen, that being Ween's Morning Glory. Can't see why it wasn't chosen. Spongebob Lost Dubs. There have been a ton of lost dubs for Spongebob over time. I don't really know much about this, so here's a clip of whatever language this is. Good. Ah! <laughs> Just one bite, deleted scene. This is probably one of the most well-known parts of this iceberg. Basically, in the season 3 episode Just One Bite, where Splatoon Word sneaks into the Krusty Krab, one may notice the odd transition as we kind of jump into the kitchen. There was an entire scene made of Squid entering the main area and tripping security systems, such as gas and fire. Originally believed to be taken down due to the September 11th attacks, our boy Vincent Waller once again clarifies saying Nickelodeon decided to take it down due to some safety concerns for kids. I would show you the clip, but I'm really worried about copyright strikes, especially with whatever that ween clip was. Procrastination Deleted Scene Huh, double whammy. So in the season 2 episode Procrastination, there were a few scenes cut out, namely one featuring Patrick applying sunscreen to Sandy, Spongebob doing some calisthenics, and one where Spongebob imagines LA traffic. 
There have been quite a few variations of this episode, some airings featuring the deleted scenes, others skipped to Spongebob not writing his essay. I know this isn't here, but every chance I get, I have to talk about it. This episode had a weird desaturated look to it, and everywhere I go, I find I basically can't find any info on this, guys. I swear it's Super Sponge. Lewd concept art. Super Sponge was a PlayStation and Game Boy Advance game made by Climax Group. Great name. The game itself is fine, but people found some special images in the file. It's only three of them, and they aren't as bad as most videos make them out to be. Obviously, I can't show you, but you can easily find it on the cutting room floor. While researching, I also found this guy's face in the files. Not quite sure why. Peter Strauss, Rip Pants. Peter Strauss wrote a good chunk of original songs to the first four seasons. He wrote Rip Pants doing the sponge, That's What Friends Do, Underwater Sun, So Long Bikini Bottom, and Down the Well. He also sung the main portion of Rip Pants, providing the first instance of Spongebob singing, if I'm correct. One other piece of trivia, in some various episodes credits, he is featured as Salt Peter, an alias he uses. Respect to this guy for making some bangers. Scaredy Pants, Spongebob's brain. This entry is probably just referring to the Halloween episode Scaredy Pants and how Spongebob's lovely brain can be seen. My only other guess is this could be referring to some censorship, as some airings cut out parts where Patrick shaves off chunks of Spongebob's head. This mostly occurs in the British airings as they can't stomach anything, hence their cuisine. Texas, deleted scene. In the season 1 episode Texas, there was a cut scene involving Spongebob breathe heavily and turn red. People found a cell of this weird looking Spongebob and the title of it read, Sweat Knit. Many believe this to be a lost episode, but nope, it was just a cut scene. Someone even actually made a recreation of it, good for them. Spongebob Rehydrated, 2003. Spongebob Rehydrated, not the remake of our beloved Battle for Bikini Bottom, was a short animated video of Spongebob and Patrick appearing in a Matrix parody with Spongebob fighting off Patrick clones in glorious 3D animation. Spongebob in Tehran, I want to say? This is some unofficial copy of Spongebob that utilizes the characters. I don't know much about this, so let's go read the IMDb synopsis verbatim. This animated story about the friendship of Spongebob and Patrick in Tehran. It's interesting to know that Bob and his friend Patrick, who travel to Iran for the first time, catch their attentions with their hamburgers until they notice something happening and Mr. Krabs holding a gun at Spongebob. There are a bunch of videos about this. I'd recommend Connor the Waffle's full retrospective on this. Glorious life replica of SpongeBob's house. Chances are you've probably seen this recreation of SpongeBob's house in all its wealthy glory. Turns out this is an actual hotel you can go to. Nickelodeon and Resorts Punta Cana? Did I say that right? I don't know. Join to make this glorious creation. This 1,500 square foot building features two bedrooms, three bathrooms, and includes extra stuff like a cupcake bar. All this is located in the Dominican Republic, so for any of my Dominican Republicans out there, sounds like you got some new plans. Plankton Got Served The Season 7 episode, One Course Meal, is not a beloved episode. Featuring Plankton wanting to get run over, it was pretty low quality. According to some, there was actually an original script that featured Plankton getting ran over and having to choose between heaven and hell and ending the episode by jumping into hell. Obviously, this was just a crappy creepypasta, but at least we got this really funny image out of it. Also, the episode was originally called Plankton Got Served, so I guess there's that. I Wanna Rock. This is referring to Goofy Goober Rock, the song that plays at the climax of the first movie. It was a parody of a band called Twisted Sister with the song originally titled I Wanna Rock. There's also a really funny interaction with him and the Spongebob crew. Him being the lead singer of the band, by the way. He was very hostile when asked if he could give the rights to his song, and claimed he was furious and it was his art. After the $300,000 offer, he quickly changed his mind. There's a bunch of good quotes from this, I check out an article on it if you can. Battle for Bikini Bottom, E3 2004 I believe this is referring to Battle for Bikini Bottom being revealed at E3, but this wouldn't be the correct year. Battle for Bikini Bottom dropped on Halloween 2003. E3 2003 took place in the middle of May, as did E3 2004. I'm just gonna assume it was a typo. The only thing I could find was this IGN video. Kinda creepy. SpongeBob in Vader Pants and Krabs' Army. 
SpongeBob Invader Pants and Krabs' Army were planned episodes for Season 9. No synopsis exists for Krabs' Army, but Invader Pants has a plot description, so let's check it out. SpongeBob and his friends try to get in contact with alien life. Again, coming in clutch, Vincent Waller confirmed that these episodes never made it past production. We also have this picture of the storyboards for a bit of Invader Pants from Casey Alexander. SpongeBob in... Oh god. So as far as I can tell, this is a fan-made movie from 2018, ranging about 40 minutes long. Can I tell you the plot? Nope. Do I understand the plot? Also nope. The best I can tell you is this. <laughs> Floorboard Harry. Floorboard Harry was a cut character from Season 2's Graveyard Shift. Instead of Nosferatu being the one flicking the light switch, it would have been Harry. SpongeBob, during his stuff to do at night scene, would have also given mail to him for some reason. SpongeBob, Happiness Square. This was a prototype game that featured quite a few elements from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Eventually it transformed into Truth or Square, but there were still a few differences, such as it having different enemies and a happiness currency. There's a ton out there on this, check out the Lost Media Wiki. SpongeBob Saves the Krusty Krab. This was a 2002 game one could only get from a Nickelodeon website, and so it was considered Lost Media for a while. It was found, and boy does it look riveting. Lost International Scene Edits. As discussed earlier, there are a ton of cutscenes or heavily edited episodes. I don't feel like going through that list, but you can check it out on the Spongebob wiki. My personal favorite is, in the Hindi dub, all instances of Spongebob's ripped pants are blurred for nudity. Thank God. Green Beret. Green Beret was one of Steven Hillenberg's animations from when he attended Cal Arts. I'd never heard of this before, so I decided to give it a watch. I'll be honest, a bit of it was uncanny, but you can see the similarities to the spongy show we know today features some guy watching a TV channel about war when a Girl Scout with freakishly huge arms shows up to advertise some cookies. He declines, she destroys his house, and moves on to the next victim. This is the best anti-war ad ever. SpongeBob SquarePants, Legend of the Lost Spatula. This was the first actual SpongeBob game. He did feature earlier in Nicktoons Racing, but this is SpongeBob's first show into the video game market. How'd he do? Well, this is for the Game Boy Color in 2001 and has Spongebob traveling to fight the Flying Dutchman to eventually get the golden spatula and become the greatest fry cook ever under the sea. Wormholes Similar to Green Beret, this is another one of Hillenberg's animations from Cal Arts. After watching the 7 minute long animation, you better watch this one yourself. The closest I can say about it is that it gives off similar vibes to the last two episodes of Evangelion. Still, pretty good though. Battle for Bikini Bottom, unused Goo Lagoon level. According to the Lost Media Wiki, there was an early version of Goo Lagoon for Battle for Bikini Bottom. Some differences between it and the finalized version include the throwable fruit or soccer balls for some reason, scripts are different, and there are just some minor glitches. I'm not sure if this is exactly what the entry is referring to, but this is the best I could find. Spongebill My best guess is that this refers to the popular YouTube poop edits of Spongebob, often called Spongebill or Spingebill. Spingebill? How do you say it? With appearances from Pat Rock or Pot Roke? Early 2010s were a weird time, man. String Anime. This is a content creator who made some Spongebob content. Yeah, I'm not touching this one. Spongebob Slendy Pants. This was an indie game made during the whole Slenderman craze. Now thankfully, I don't have to do any work here, and I can just steal a clip from Markiplier back from 2013. Thanks, Mark. He's no longer in the immediate vicinity, and I... Ah! Lost in Time Commercial, 2006. This was a commercial that Burger King put out to promote the Lost in Time kids toy set. There's so much Burger King on this list. I think the reason why it is on this iceberg is because of some of the new animation, seemingly made for this video and this video alone. Too bad it's Burger King, and the only good thing they offer are those inflatables. Nicktoons Summer Splash. SpongeBob's Summer Splash was a cartoon block that ran from 2pm to 5pm during summer 2000 and 2001. It featured animated segments of SpongeBob and the crew hosting a live event show, and some of it's really cool. Nickelodeon's Summer Beach House. I guess it was so good they had to make a sequel. This is a continuation from the previous entry and was basically just bigger and better than the last cartoon block. It featured characters from most of Nickelodeon's IPs, not just SpongeBob. The Burger Mess. This was believed to be a plug-and-play game about Spongebob and the crew. 
Couldn't find too much about it other than what I assume is a fan video that is more like a mobile game. The only thing I can say about it was that it used the glorious controller. A burger mess too. Yeah, I don't know. Nickelodeon Blimp Short. This was a short animated segment produced for the 2005 Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. Nothing too notable other than how Geary just kind of slides into frame. What happened to the Kids Choice Awards? They had a segment for their favorite album of 2023. Wait, yo, they got Dawn FM? Pam Tree. Pam Tree, similar to a few entries before, is a content creator who made some SpongeBob stuff. Similar to my reaction before, I'm not doing much with this. Ain't Life a Beach. This was a press kit assembled to give out to television industry employees to promote the show. It is actually the first piece of Spongebob merch ever made. It apparently was made even before the show premiered. It includes character bios, plot synopses, slides, stickers, and model sheets. I would love to grab one of these. Nickelodeon Game Builder. This was an online flash game where one could build Spongebob games using assets. I don't know too much about this, and I don't really feel like grabbing it for a video. Grab Jet Racing. This was a planned crossover racing game that would feature Spongebob and a bunch of other famous Nick characters, such as Ren and Stimpy, the one robot chick from My Life as a Teenage Robot, and Satan from Fanboy and Chum Chum. This would have been a fast-paced game, you could use weapons, but unfortunately it actually never left the beta stage. There are a few screenshots, but no build of the game exists at the moment. Nick Extreme Sports. I think this was a game for whatever the Mattel Hyperscan was, and was apparently fully completed but never released due to the terrible console sales. Not too much is known besides some booster pack images. Your guess is as good as mine on this one. Legends of Bikini Bottom or Wraparounds. I have genuinely no idea what the barnacle this thing is referring to. I found this video of a game, if you can even call it that, no clue what this means. Spongebob Rehydrated Audio. My guess is this is either referring to some audio bugs in the remaster Rehydrated or it is referring to the Spongebob movie Rehydrated and a fan made edit which is really good by the way but that also came out after this post. Not sure on this one either. You Pick Live. This was a weekday event that aired standalone episode segments of Nick shows. Hooky and Dumped apparently both premiered during this. Not much info on the wiki about this so my guess is you could vote for stuff? I don't know. The iceberg is really starting to get obscure, not in a fun or entertaining way. I want to go back to Obama. Help Wanted Early Logo Before the main animation studio, United Plankton Pictures, was really created for Spongebob, the ending logo was used in an earlier version of Help Wanted. Tea at the Tree Dome Original Title Card Season 1's Tea at the Tree Dome originally featured a different title card. Not gonna lie, I like it more than the original. This image was found on the Super Sponge disc, which had some extra assets. This is the only place this image has ever been seen before. No home releases, no edits, nothing. Ripped Pants Original Plot Yeah, I couldn't find anything about this. There was one potential lead, but I don't know if I trust Spongebob TV Wikipedia. Naked Squidward, ooh. Okay, I like where this one could be going. I don't know what it's referring to, but I'm just gonna assume it's about the multiple times Mr. Tennis Balls has been naked. Squeaky Boots Alternate Ending I got nothing for this one. Now I'm not saying some of these entries are made up, but maybe there's a reason for like the past seven entries or so I found nothing about it. Mr. Krabs' parents were supposed to be dead. No? Girl power. According to this post in verbatim, instead of Sandy raking leaves into the Texas shape with the word Texas, it was originally supposed to be girl power, but was changed because Texas fitted Sandy's character more. I'm really glad they included the episode title because I spent 10 minutes searching over Season 1's Texas episode to find wherever this scene is, only to find it in Season 2's pre-hibernation week. Following this entry, I have made a recreation of what it would look like. That's all I have for this section, now we move on to... Spongebob Lost Episode Commercials I believe this is referring to commercials for Season 3's The Sponge Who Could Fly. They are pretty basic, generic lost media type commercials. There's some patchy bits here and there along with some sponsorships, such as Twinkies, Danimals, and the legendary Daddy Daycare by Eddie Murphy. Thank God. The Paper's Climax Not entirely sure what this means. Obviously it is referring to Season 1's Rarely Viewed The Paper, the sister episode to the Valentine's Day episode. It was originally going to be called Lemons at a Lemonade, referring to Squidward's lack of creativity. Only other thing I could even find remotely relating to this was plans for Squidward's belongings to come to life and Spongebob would have to use the paper to fight back. 
It's probably not where the entry is referring to, though, so I don't know. Pre-hibernation week alternate ending. The only reference I could find for this was a TV Tropes article on the episode, and it states that during Season 2's pre-hibernation week, after Sandy falls asleep, Spongebob would then say, Why I oughta, instead of falling asleep as well. Not sure how well I can trust TV tropes here, but hey, there's some info on that girl power entry from earlier. Huh. Grotesque crab storyboards. During Season 2's Jellyfish Hunter, we have the famous more crab scene. There were plans and storyboards detailed for even more disgusting and creepy crabs faces, but they didn't make it out. Man, they do look great though. Squilliam Returns Storyboards. Can't find anything relating to this at all. There's a single Reddit post on the Spongebob subreddit talking about it, and it might have been a quick scene of Squilliam constantly one-upping Squidward. Considering how this is nowhere to be found wherever I look, it's probably fake. Sandy Gets Arrested. Probably referring to someone's in the kitchen with Sandy, where she gets arrested for public nudity. Is there more to this entry? Maybe, but I can't find anything else besides what I just stated. Spongebob Doppelgangers. My best guess is this is either referring to shows that might be trying to copy Spongebob, or more likely a cut scene from the first movie, where Spongebob and Patrick run into human versions of themselves. Or this could also be referring to a cut scene from Dunces and Dragons with a similar scenario from the cut movie scene. Ghost Host Deleted Scene. There's a Reddit post talking about a scene from Ghost Host, but they found it was just in the original episode. Other than that, this is nothing entry. Thanks, Reddit. Gary being milked. Okay, there's no information on this, and I'm not going to go out looking for it. Atlantis Square Pantis being split into two parts. This is referring to how some countries will cut Atlantis Square Pantis into two parts instead of just a long movie format episode. Squidward getting run over by a truck. Hey, yo, what's up, it's Squidward? Hey, look, it's Squidward, man, he's chilling out in the road. Hey, what's up, Squidward? Yo, what's that in the back? Yo, is that a truck coming? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, sh**. Squidward! Squidward, move! Squidward, the truck's coming! Oh my god, he has headphones on! He can't hear us! Oh my god, Squidward, move! You're gonna die! Neptune's Party. This is just referring to the Season 6 episode, Clash of Triton, where King Neptune has his 5,000th birthday party. Not sure why it's on the iceberg list, so I probably got it wrong, but oh well. Fuzzy's Golden Belt. Fuzzy, a karate instructor from Season 8's The Way of the Sponge, has a bunch of karate belts, with colors reflecting skill level. A golden belt is never mentioned or seen, so I don't know why we have an entry on it. Sandy's original naked design. Someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. Great, another nothing entry- OH MY NEPTUNE, WHAT IS THAT?! Captain Frosty Mug's red beard. Captain Frosty Mug was originally supposed to have a red beard instead of a gray one. Wait, he's played by Michael McKean? As in THE Michael McKean? I knew there was a reason I never trusted Frosty Mug. Hooky, dead fish rumor. There's some rumors that for season 1's Hooky, a fish could be spotted going to the surface. This is heavily implied to happen to a fish kid that Pat references earlier and we get to see his shoes, but no such scene of him getting caught actually exists. Valentine's Day kissing rumor. Couldn't really find anything about this, your guess is as good as mine. No more getting nailed. This is a misquote from Season 2's Life of Crime. When Sponge and Pat are on the run, Spongebob says, no more getting male, not nailed, unfortunately. Plankton taking out Spongebob's brain. My guess is this refers to Season 2's Welcome to the Chum Bucket, where Plankton takes Spongebob's brain and puts it into a robot. I'm assuming, so stay with me, that this is trying to imagine a scene of Plankton actually removing the brain and putting it in the robot. This doesn't exist. Either that or every piece of info relating to this vague entry has been wiped out. Mr. Puff is in Shell City Rumor. Season 2's Krusty Love features a cutaway gag to Mr. Puff, Mrs. Puff's dead husband, who has been turned into a lamp. There's a similar looking pufferfish on display at Shell City in the first movie, so some theories claim he is there. If he is, then he got revived by the sprinklers, so all he has to do is traverse the entire way back to Bikini Bottom, including the dangerous trench, the boneyard where that old lady anglerfish attacked, and the remains of the Thug Tug Bar, and more. He'll probably be fine. You'll never guess what I found in my pants. So in Season 3's One Crab's Trash, Spongebob has a line where he says, You'll never guess what I found in my sock last night. Go ahead, guess. There is a single forum post where someone claims the original Aaron replaced sock with pants. Obviously fake, let's move on. Spongebob and the Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. 
Thankfully, I couldn't find anything about this. Screw Flapjack. All my homies hate Flapjack. Location of Rodeo Days, Texas Town. No clue. Nobody knows. Location of the stadium in Sweet Victory. I thought this was going to be unknown, but other people did the hard work for me. Season 2's Band Geeks features a large crowd observing a football match, and it has been found to actually be a UFSL match from June 16, 1984, with the Memphis Showboats vs. Birmingham Stallions. Do I know what any of that means? No. I can't believe we actually found this. It's so cool. And that's it. No more entries remain on this list. I learned some stuff about Spongebob, but towards the end this iceberg felt really lackluster. Far too many vague entries that didn't have any supporting information at all. I'm still glad there were a ton of great entries though. Hope you learned something from this video, it's been really fun to make. Thanks for watching this video.